My name is Jonathan. We're going to talk about getting started in the intro ID securities. To label set, what the heck is intro ID? Well, intro ID was formerly called Azure AD, and a lot of people, including myself, are still bitter about it. It's Microsoft's clouded identity access management service. And it can be ran as a cloud only service. Or it can be ran hybrid just to let it all set and make sure we all know what hybrid is. That means we're running Active Directory and then pushing the attributes from Active Directory to our users in IntraID. And so we've got this IntraID, this identity service that's controlling all our users. And where did the inspiration for this talk come from? Well, like a lot of talks, this talk came from real life. I was a new guy on the secure, security team. Our security team went from being a team of one to a team of two. I was the second person. My boss looked at me and said, you're in charge of intro ID security, figure it out. So my reaction was, holy crap, I need to figure this out quickly because the truth is you can trim a donkey's ears, but that doesn't make him eligible for the Kentucky Derby. So as we know, learning anything in cybersecurity can be difficult. And intro ID is like that too. So I needed to figure things out. And this is the talk that I wish I'd heard when I was getting started. Because what it looked like when I was trying to learn this was a lot like this. I was putting the stick in my own spoke and tripping myself up all along the way. What I felt like through a lot of this process was this. I had a lot of head on desk moments. Now I will give a dis disclaimer. I am no expert in intro ID security, but hopefully I'm like the guy from Monty Python and I have got better as times went on. So to, because this is only a 15 minute talk, my goal was I need to formulate a way to describe how I learned intro ID security and how I got better at it. That was the method in, in the madness. And the way I would describe it is I had to leap in the intro ID security. And of course I'm a nerd of nerds, leap is an acronym. So what did this process look like? Well, the first thing I had to do is I had to learn. Because there was a lot of crap that I didn't have a clue about. And so the question I had to figure out is where the heck do I start? Because I had been an administrator. I've worked IT support. I'd seen some of these things. But there were a lot of things I just didn't have a clue about. So if I was starting over... And I had to learn intro ID security all over again. What would be the first things I'd want to learn? Well, number one, I'd want to know what are the common attacks used against the intro ID. If we're going to defend it, what are the ways bad guys target it? What are the attacks used against it? What tools are commonly used to attack the intro ID? I'm a firm believer that if we're going to be good defenders, we have to understand offensive security. That is crucial. What are the log sources? For intro ID. Because, you know, when I was there, I was like, well, logs for intro ID, there must just be one source, right? No. God, no. What is security defaults? Microsoft throws that term around a lot when you read intro ID security documentation. What the heck is that? What's that mean? What are privilege roles? Now, if you do intro ID security, this is a safe space. Feel free to raise your hand. How many of you have struggled with role management? Me too. Because it's freaking hard. Because there are, whether you know it or not, there are 93 default, not custom, default roles in Antra ID. There's the last time I counted, there was like 40 some, maybe 30 um, privilege roles, as Microsoft classifies them. So figuring that out can be really freaking hard. Here's the question. Microsoft now deems some roles, they used to not do this, but they now deem some roles as privileged. But are there other roles that we as defenders, we as security people that we look at and say, you know, Microsoft doesn't call this privilege, but it's still a big deal if a bad guy pops an account with this role. And then what are the baselines for intra ID security? What are the things for intra ID security that we should be doing at any enterprise? Now, as we're learning, we got to know the places to learn. The great thing about being in 2024 is there are a lot of great resources to learn in ID security. There's also some bad ones. So I went through and thought about all the people I've learned from. 
And I've learned from a lot. Guys like Jeff Kasma, Meryl Fernando, uh, D Dr. Azure AD. I'm not going to try to say his name because I'll butcher it. Um, Nathan McNulty, Dirk Jamalina, really good. Offensive security practitioner when it comes to Azure ID. Lena Lau. If you're interested in incident response, um, when it comes to enter ID, Lena's got a really good course on that. She also recently published a blog on all the token types in enter ID. That's a really good blog. It's really useful. If you're just getting started and trying to wrap your hands around what kind of tokens are on enter ID, go read that blog. It's really good. Matt Zorick uh, used to be on the dark team over at Microsoft. Now I think he's on the ghost team. If you use KQL at all, um, and want to know more about that, Matt's a really good guy to learn from. Say Ian Barber over at uh, Baber over at Cloud Brothers is a guy I've learned a lot from, does a lot of good blogs. This is not an exhaustive list. There's a lot of other people like Bo Boyk, uh, Steve Borish, just uh, people that I've gleaned so much from. But this is just the people that really, when I was getting started, helped me get on my journey. Now, not only are there some good people to learn from, there are some great places to pick up information. Spectrops. I went and looked last night again. They have a crap ton of information about intra ID security, really good stuff. Trimark Security, those folks are here this week. They have some really good stuff on intra ID security. I was glad to see they still have all the articles classified as Azure AD security. It, it gave me a little pleasure to see that. Another blog to check out if you're not familiar with it, if you're involved with intra ID at all, is intra.news. One of the guys I mentioned on the previous slide, Merrill Fernando, <coughs> excuse me. He uh, puts that blog together, that newsletter every week, and it covers security, it covers new features. It's a really good source of information when it comes to Azure, or excuse me, Enter ID. See how I did it myself. And then two, I know we all probably dislike documentation, but Microsoft Learn is really, really useful. Now, does their documentation suck sometimes? Absolutely. But is there good documentation on Microsoft Learn where you can learn a lot about intra ID security? Absolutely. So we're going to learn what are we going to do next? We got to experiment. Because it's one thing, we all know people who know things, but there's a difference between knowing something and knowing how to do something and actually being able to execute it. So we, we're going to learn by doing. If you're not, if you don't realize it, one thing you can do is you can get a dev, dev tenant from Microsoft. It's a tenant with E5 licensing. And I encourage you to get one and poke around. See what you can do. See what things you can break. See what things you can implement. Another thing that is really cool, if you've never heard of it, is something called Badge, Badger. And it uses Terraform to set up a intra ID tenant that has... All these security misconfigurations. So if I'm a guy that's focused, if I'm a person that's focusing on offensive security, I can try to attack that tenant. If I'm somebody that's a defender, what can I do? Well, I can go try to correct all the misconfigurations. So that's a really good resource. And then one of the other things I would encourage you to do, if you get a dev tenant, try some tools out. Things like Road Tools, Token Tactics, AAD, Internals, MFA Sweep, Graph Runner, Scooby Eater. Um, the top of this list, sorry, I'm moving really quick because I'm running out of time already. Because I told you, why the heck did I submit this as a 15-minute talk? I'm a glutton for punishment, I guess. These, if you don't know, are all offensive tools. These last two are defensive tools. They will help you analyze an intra ID tenant and get to know what is there and what they misconfigured. This specifically is geared toward the CIS benchmarks for intra ID, so it can be a really useful tool. Just PowerShell strips around. Also, check out things like Blood Castle, Ping Out, and Purple Knight. They all have modules um, for intra ID and intra ID security. Now, one thing I will also say about experimenting, it's probably in your best interest to not experiment in production. I don't have time to talk about it, but I did experiment in production when I was new to security. I ended up DOSing every user we have in what I call the Great UPN Massacre. So if you want to hear about that, come chat with me. I'll be happy to tell you that story. So if you're going to experiment, what would I say uh, to try set up a hybrid tenant? But do it securely. Because how do you do that? How do you set up a hybrid tenant securely? Figure it out. Set up a conditional access policy. You have a tenant set up a conditional access policy. Kill tokens before they expire. Set up PM or privilege identity management. 
So the SSO for an application, especially if you've never worked on the support or the admin side, this can be a really good way to figure out how things like SSO works. Because if we figure out how it works, then we can figure out how to secure it. Figure out how to set up application pro proxy. And then experiment with questions like, how can I steal a token or how can a bad guy steal a token to bypass him or And then two, if we're using conditional access policies, um... How do you know that there, if there's gaps in your conditional access policies? How do you figure that out? Those are the things I'd experiment with and try to figure out in my dev tenant. So we learned, we experimented, what we do next? We ask questions. One of the great things about learning is that causes us to have questions. Because I've found over the years, the more I learn, the less I know because I have more questions. And that's awesome. So... Here's the thing we have to remember. We shouldn't be afraid to ask them because all of us have questions about a lot of different things. The good thing is, too, in InfoSec, there's a lot of awesome people that are willing to answer our questions. A lot of the people that I mentioned that I've mentioned because I've interacted with them, that I've asked stupid questions, and they've been very gracious to me. I really appreciate that. Are there jerks in InfoSec? Sure. But let's show most people. Also, ask yourself questions. As you're learning, one of the best things you can do for yourself is ask yourself, hey, why does this work this way? Or what happens if I do this? So I, I like to, in talks, give well, the thing I like to get when I come to talks is I like to get ideas or have things to go home with. So I wanted to add some homework questions in here, some things to think about. Because this is a, a starter talk. And if you're getting started in HRID, you may, security, you may not know the questions to ask yet. So here's some starter questions for you. What's an illicit consent threat? Um, excuse me. What's an illicit consent grant attack? How do we prevent it? Questions like, what's the partner tier two support role do? Should it be used? What's a stealthy way to get persistence in answer ID? What's an entity tag? And how do you set it up? So these are just why. These are some of the questions that as I've read documentation, I've looked at things, I've had these questions and I've answered them. I've dug and figured them out. So I'm like, oh, you know, these are things that are really helpful to know when it comes to answer ID security. And then last, this is not really, this whole framework is not just for answer ID security or black anything. But the really important thing when it comes to any, learning anything in cybersecurity, just keep going, persist. Learning anything can be super hard and difficult. Keep trying. Keep growing. You've got this. I, as I've already said, don't be afraid to ask for help. I'm a toddler dad, so I spend a lot of time watching toddler cartoons, so forgive me for what I'm about to show you. But as, Blue, as Coco's mom said to Bluey, you're doing great. Keep going. Keep learning. You've got this. If I can help you in any way, I'd be happy to. Now, in conclusion, hopefully, if you're getting started in ID security, this gives you a little better information to get started on your journey. Remember the process. Learn, experiment, ask questions, and persist. If you want to tell me the talk sucked, I'm on X, Discord, all different platforms. It's jrodge404. Thank you guys so much.